Hi again, welcome to Chipmunk of Power, writing love. Our video today is the first in our page to stage series, the basics of writing a play and formatting thereof. If you're new to playwriting, don't be daunted. A play is just like any other story. Story arcs, character arcs, those things exist. A play is just a framework to use in the telling thereof. Like any framework, it takes a little time to get acquainted with the rules and the basic feel, but it's not as difficult as it seems. Let's look at the similarities between this and your basic novel or story writing. Outline first if that's the way you do things, just as normal. As said, the arcs are basically the same. You'll have your hero's journey or however you want to skew that. Your plot will have at least one problem, a solution, lots of obstacles between the two, and your opening scene is going to set all this up, including your main character. Okay, so that's a summary of how things are the same. Now let's get to the differences. The midpoint of any play is not going to be the climax of the play, but it is going to be a climax of sorts. The midpoint of any story is going to bring with it a turning point for the character, a cliffhanger, maybe a difficult decision. Now this may be bumped up slightly in intensity for a play, at least one that comes in two acts. Your audience needs something to talk about during the intermission and a reason to look forward to the second act. This also applies from scene to scene, if not with as great an intensity, but one scene should lead to another and give the audience a reason to look forward to what's coming, much like chapters. The placing of story beats. In your typical hero's journey arc, there are going to be certain points you want to hit along the way. Well, a play has those necessary points to hit as well, but you have to take timing more into consideration. As said, just as every scene leads to another, an act must lead to another, but more so. Taking the two-act play as our standard, ideally, your first act should contain more questions than answers and leave enough of those questions unanswered to give your audience something to talk about during intermission. These can be overt questions, but most of the time you'll want to make them more subtle and implied, arising from the situation. Your characters have a problem. Can they find a solution? They may have a potential solution, but they haven't tried it yet. Will it work? So there you go. You're fueling interest and your audience is hyped and all the more ready to put their butts back into those seats for another 45 minutes to an hour. Pacing. This is always important, but surprise, surprise, a book is a different animal. Now, an average-sized novel will take your reader a few hours total, and they can break up that time however they like. Your theater-goer, though, is a captive audience, and they only have maybe a 20-minute break in the middle when they can stretch their legs and go buy candy. I'm not talking, like, constant action, unless it's, say, like, a slamming doors farce that's not appropriate. But it does have to be something that's going to keep your audience's interest. Does the character have to realize something important? Can we tell that they're about to or on the pathway there? Is there a hint of some overall mystery? What questions can you come up with or imply that there are or even answer, but they lead to other questions? Keep in mind your style of story. If it's a comedy, keep that funny going with occasional serious moments sprinkled in to give the audience a break, unless, again, it's a farce. If it's a drama, the opposite, keep it serious, multi-leveled, with occasional funny moments in to lighten the mood. Ultimately, the main thing to keep in mind is your audience and their expectations. You don't want them to get bored. This is especially important when writing plays aimed at kids and families. There are going to be little squirmers and wrigglers in the audience just waiting to do their thing. If you can keep the action on the stage interesting, it'll keep their attention directed at the stage, and then the parents will be able to keep their attention on the stage, and it's a win-win. Timing, timing, timing. I cannot stress this enough. Why? One reason is that play publishers, like regular novel publishers have a word count, play publishers have a required 
page count. This can vary by publisher and style of play. Now my published play happens to be of the sort I referenced earlier, geared toward families. So it comes in at about 65 to 70 pages prior to formatting. Every page represents about a minute. So check your limit and remember it's there for a reason. Keep that play snappy, not rambly. Dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. Dialogue is your absolute king in stage plays. It should be informative, but not boring, unless that's the point. Move the plot along, contain foreshadowing where necessary. Be true to and develop the character, and above all, flow naturally. Now, that may seem like a lot to ask of dialogue, but it's really not much more than you ask of dialogue in your typical story. Dialogue is so important because, guess what? There is not a lot of description in a play other than that you need to give to your character to say for any particular reason. All you need to describe in your script as pertains to surroundings are A. The basic location and day slash time of the proceedings and B. Everything necessary for the set. Perhaps a few extra items of decor, but mostly you want to leave this up to the director. Dialogue descriptions, by which I mean the way somebody says a line. This is another thing you'll want to use sparingly. You don't want to dictate their performance to the actor. However, there are cases where a certain line can come across as ambiguous. In this case, you'll want to either make a note before the dialogue, like so. Jack, with a sarcastic smirk. Maybe he's in love. Or you can stick in a separate description line prior to the dialogue. Jack smirks sarcastically. Jack, maybe he's in love. Now what you deem necessary is up to you, so take a good critical look at your script. I've put any sort of action in my script from someone swinging a punch to someone taking a sip of their drink. And minor things like the latter may not absolutely be needed, but it can give some subtle info about the character and give the actor something to go off of. Entrances and exits. This may seem like an obvious and rather dull point to make, but you'd be surprised how hard it is to keep track of who's where when, especially when you've got a decent sized cast. In one of my plays, I had forgotten to write an exit for one of the characters. So then in the workshop staging, he wound up hanging around on stage while two of the other actors got into an argument and he looked very uncomfortable through the whole thing. So I cannot stress this enough. Make sure you write entrances and exits where they need to be. Character descriptions. As with scenery descriptions, you'll want to keep this vague. That is a very heavy departure from your average novel that some novelists barely fill out their character descriptions at all, but it's not typical. In a play, you don't want to describe your character's physical attributes in great detail. Keep in mind this will be cast with actual people, ideally over and over again, and you want to give the director as much range as possible. Descriptions are usually limited to age, male, female, or otherwise, emotional hallmarks, and perhaps the way they react to situations or stimuli. And even all that depends on the character. Gender might not matter. Age might not either, etc., etc. Formatting. Play formatting is a very different beast from novel formatting. First off, let me say that it is ridiculously hard to find a good example of your typical stage play format on the interwebs. I managed to find something and I'll drop it in the description below. If you manage to find anything else, please put a link in the comments. There is a lot of white space. So even though your formatting stretches out your page numbers, you can see that you have a limited amount of space to pack a punch. And even then it can't be overt. So now this isn't as hard as it sounds. Once you get used to it, it's a lot easier. And once you get the format in your head, it'll become second nature to write that way. 
Now instead of your basic format, I'm going to use the formatted version of my stage play, The Family Fruitcake, to give you a better idea how this all looks. So let's get started. So first, the title page. Your title followed by your byline. When sending to a publisher, you're going to want to put your contact info and also if you've copyrighted it or not. Copywriting it first is a very good idea. Next, we have a cast list. This is your basic overview of every featured character, by which I mean they have some importance to the story, whether they have lines or not. Now, as mentioned, your typical character description will contain their name, their age, M if the part is played by a male, F if the part is played by a female, M slash F if it can be played by either. I don't know if other gender pronouns have made their way into other plays, but I expect these would work along the same lines. And you'll also want to indicate their relationship to at least one other character. Then we have approximately one to three sentences that contain important characteristics that will be shown throughout the script. We also have their basic emotional state and their motivation, that is, what they want or need. Now you want all this because this is the page that both the director and the actors scan to get an idea of what they're in for and how they want to play it. This is especially important in auditions where actors will not have the opportunity to read the whole play. Again, what you will typically not see are remarks in regards to appearance, skin tone, hair, eyes, height, etc. This is to give the director as free reign as possible. So only include that if it is definitely important to your story. You also pair the description down to the essentials because it gives the actor more room to do their job. As a writer, you write the script. You don't micromanage what comes after. Okay, so the next page contains our setting boiled down to time and place. If different acts take place in different settings, you list them. But something to keep in mind is that scene changes on stage are time consuming, and the more you have increases the difficulty of mounting the production at all. It can in fact decrease your chances of finding a publisher and finding a theater to put on your play. So if you have scene changes, try to keep them minimal and simple. And that's why so many plays stay in one location through the whole thing. Or maybe if they have a scene change, it takes place between acts. So the stagehands have time during intermission to accomplish this. So you list the basic setting. Is it a town? Is it a ship? Is it a house? That's really all you need to say. Then there's the time, which is mainly the point at which the action starts. Although if act two takes place later, you can add that if it's important to know. You do not need to list the exact date, unless, again, it's important to the story, because generally you're going to want your play to have a timeless feel. The next page is the start of the play. Yay, you got there! The very first thing you'll want to describe what's on the stage. A quick note, you can see in my example that I put interior, like interior, exterior. I had only ever learned film scripts. You do not have to put this. Interior, exterior is not important in the theater as they all take place on the interior, unless it's an outdoor theater. But I digress. Now, as said, the description shows just what needs to be on the stage. You can Add a few suggestions to set decoration to set the tone, like I put children's artwork and ugly afghans, but it's not necessary. An additional but very important side note, try to keep the entire setting relatively simple and manageable for the stage. Your play might get picked up by Broadway and be this huge thing and they'll have the budget and the time for all those bells and whistles. It could happen, but you know, let's just err on the side of caution, shall we? Now, we have the first entrance of a character. As it's the first entrance, I extended the description a little. You can see with the formatting, it's shoved over to one side. Why? I have no idea. 
but that's what the formatting calls for, so it is what it is, and that's what we do. Moving on. The first line comes, and it is from a character not on stage, so we add OS, which stands for off stage, to indicate that. You can see the character names are centered, and the lines are shoved over to the left margin. This can be very awkward if it is a short line. Again, why do they do this? I don't know, but I don't make the rules. If there is a pause, as shown with Jim's line, it takes place right after the line in parentheses. You can also include a beat or a pause in the middle of the line, but generally speaking, you don't want to do this, or you can accompany it with some certain action. And action can be mentioned during dialogue, but keep it brief and keep it necessary. Now that's generally how your formatting is going to go. At the end of the first act, you're going to put blackout or curtain. Either one will do. The theater will do what they need to do as necessary. And then end. Also at the end of the second act. Blackout, end. Also at the end of my play, I added a props list. This is not absolutely necessary. I just thought it would be a help to cast and crew. And that's it. That's the basics of how play formatting works. Above everything else, the key thing to remember when writing a script is a play is a collaboration. I did say the job of a playwright is to write, and I meant it. After you've written it, the play is out of your hands, so keep them off. It can be hard, especially when directors go ahead and change things that are in your script. This is not supposed to happen, but it does happen. Always keep in mind, though, that the play itself does not change. The words on the page will stay as you wrote them. And then there's the fact that every time your play is put on, it will be the same, but it'll be different. And that's a pretty cool thing. So I hope you learned something from this video. I will be following this up with uh, Page to Stage Part 2, the workshopping process. By all means, give us a like and comment below. Are you writing a play or thinking about writing one? And is there more you would like to know? Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to stay updated on all our latest videos out every Thursday. I will see you next week, and until then, write with power! Addendum here are some helpful theater terms to know. Act. A large section of the play, split into scenes. Most plays are two acts. There are also one acts, three acts, four acts, five acts, see Shakespeare. Beat. Like a pause, but shorter. You can think of a beat as a breath. A pause would be two or more breaths, an extended beat. Blocking. This is the action as played out on stage, anything from combat to simply walking across the room. Generally speaking, blocking is done by the director, although the writer can note it in the script if it's important. Cross or crossing. The action of walking on stage, i.e., Joe crosses to the couch and sits. Intermission. An extended break in the play's action, typically between acts, when the audience gets to go to the bathroom and buy Twizzlers. Mmm, Twizzlers. Line. A line is not necessarily a single sentence, but it's a section of dialogue for a particular character. John. I love you. I've always loved you. Marcia. That's nice. John has a line. Marcia has a line. Props. Anything that is picked up or handled by the actors and or an object lent a special meaning by the script. Scene. A section of an act, usually set in a single location. Scenes in a play typically behave as chapters in a book. Stagehands. 
people whose job it is to move things around on the stage and behind the scenes, both before, during, and after the play. Keep them in mind as well as the actors when writing your scenes. Workshop. The process of working with the theater to ensure your play is ready to go on the stage. This consists of table reads and workshop stagings, but I'll go into that more in a future video. Mm -hmm.